The chair now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Huffman. Mr. Secretary, it's good to see you. You can see that I, I serve here in Congress with some of the greatest minds of the 19th century. Thank you for your leadership. Um, I will tell you, as the representative for the North Coast of California, it warms my heart when I hear a Midwesterner correctly describing the importance of anadromous fish passage. Uh, that was one in many points in your testimony that uh, met with my strong approval. I appreciate that. And I really want to appreciate the hard work you're doing to quickly and efficiently roll out these historic investments from the IAJA and the IRA. Um, a lot of good work is happening because of your leadership in my district. Um, one of those culvert replacement projects, a $20 million one, uh, $20 million worth of those projects in Humboldt and Mendocino County, uh, good for transportation, great for anadromous fish. And of course, uh, we were there at the Golden Gate Bridge to celebrate the $400 million investment that is gonna make that iconic landmark and critical uh, infrastructure um, asset safe uh, from seismic risk for the next 100 years. Um, it is especially exciting that all of these investments from the IAJA and the IRA are just getting started, so we can expect more good news to come, and that's particularly true for the incentives to trans transition to electric and zero emission transportation sources. I'm really proud to see the state of California uh, leading on this. Uh, our advanced clean cars to rule uh, will require that all uh, vehicles sold in the state be zero emission by 2035. Uh, as you've acknowledged, uh, other states are following this standard as well. It's not just California and the industry itself. Uh, is heading in this direction. So thanks for acknowledging the imperative of owning and leading uh, on this important transition. But we still have to tackle um, the, the thing that's kind of complicating and holding back this transition, the, the chicken and egg problem of charging infrastructure. So I wanted to uh, ask you a bit about that. Um, we're, we're especially challenged to uh, to see more charging infrastructure in higher density areas and in less affluent communities. So California is uh, certainly ready to lead in this space as well, uh, but we're in desperate need of funding assistance. Um, EVs have become so popular in California that the, the vehicle to charging station ratio um, is especially dire. We need more chargers in California if we're gonna to continue to lead. So I hope that you will uh, give fair and equitable consideration to that as you continue to roll out the funding for charging infrastructure. The need is even greater when we look at medium and heavy duty vehicles uh, that produce a disproportionately uh, higher amount of greenhouse gas emission. Currently there's just four public, uh, publicly accessible charging stations and three hydrogen fueling stations to serve zero emission trucks on the entire West Coast. And so I know that California and Washington and Oregon have come together on a joint application uh, for funding. Uh, it is the West Coast Truck Charging and Fueling Corridor Project. Uh, it would deploy 34 publicly available charging stations, five hydrogen fueling stations to support zero emission, medium and heavy duty vehicles on the West Coast. We hope you will give that uh, your full and equitable consideration as well. And um, in that regard, I just want to ask you, uh, what can communities do to um, complement all of this historic federal funding that is, is becoming available and make EV charging more accessible and equitable? Well, thanks. It's a great question because sometimes I fear that communities or states see that we're doing a lot federally and think that means, well, we shouldn't be doing much locally. Uh, of course, the best way to unlock and take advantage of this national and federal push is for there to be local and state commitments as well, and we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, I think it's also important for local jurisdictions to provide whatever data they have on where the need is greatest. This is not like gas stations. Uh, it's different. It's both easier and harder. It's, it's easier in the sense that unlike gas, a majority of Americans will wind up doing a majority of their charging at home. On the other hand, it's harder because unlike gas, it can take a lot more than three or four minutes to fill up depending what kind of vehicle and what kind of charger we're talking about. So we can't just put a charging station everywhere there's a gas station. We really need to recognize that this is different and the implications from uh, grid policy to land use are profound. 
we need to be working with states and communities, not just as project sponsors, but as thought partners in getting the right profile for that installed base of that 500,000 charging stations that the president envisions us having as a country by the end of this decade. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. And in just a few seconds, I also wanna invite you to come and uh, visit a port uh, modernization project we've got to service offshore wind in Humboldt County, uh, also within your jurisdiction. I think it would be of great interest. We'd love to have you there and we can show you some anadromous fish passage projects while you're there. Mr. Chairman, I will yield back, but I will ask unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, an article uh, that is pretty responsive to the comments that my colleague from Minnesota made about EVs not working. It is from the Twin Metals Mining uh, Corporation of Minnesota announcing that they are converting their whole fleet to electric vehicles. So apparently they're pretty excited about EVs in frigid Minnesota. And with that, I yield back. Without objection, so ordered. Chair, thanks.